Jamie. Hi, Mr. Brosnan. How are you, sir? Um, I'm very good indeed. Very good, Jamie. Yes, how is everything with you? Everything is very good. I, I want to tell you, first of all, that I really adore this movie. Um, it's it, it's romantic and it's funny, but most of all what I like about it is that it's genuinely good-hearted and truthful. Um, oh, well, thank you, Jamie, very much. I, I, was, I couldn't agree more with you, to tell you the truth. Uh, I'm a big fan of Suzanne Baer's work, and so to be offered a job with her was very meaningful for me, and it came to me under the title of bald-headed hairdresser, which I thought was quite comedic <laughs> and bold and Danish. Um, uh, but it could travel under that heading or the, the beautiful heading it's got, which is more lyrical and accessible. Love is all you need. And um, deeply proud of this film, deeply proud having worked with all these great actors and Suzanne and um, that it, it it's, it's like a, a warm embrace of a film. Yeah, it really is. And but this part was was it partly written for you? I I read it and um I called her up that morning. I was in New York actually on another picture um which was billed as a romantic comedy. And <laughs> but this was so poignant and there were so many emblems within the piece uh, that I could identify with being a man, being a a father, a single parent for a time, and the loss of a wife, etc. Um, and however, that being said, I did say to Susan, I said, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to fit in here as an Irishman. And she said, Don't worry, I will write it for you. And uh, she, she, she did. I mean, there were, there were embellishments made as the piece went on. It, one, one of the aspects, and you just touched upon it, that the, of the character arc is is dealing with loss, and I think that that's something that so many of us can relate to. But what was it as it was portrayed in the screenplay, what was it about that journey that you found particularly truthful? Well, when you, when you, when you lose uh, a partner in life, it is, uh, it is the most devastating emotion. Uh, it is the most claustrophobic and the most... You, you are adrift within that uh, pain and that suffering, and especially when you have children, uh, how to continue on, they, how do you have meaningful life again, how do you meet another person, how do you deal with just the day-to-day -day issues of getting up and going to work. And the character that I play, Philip, is, is uh, <laughs> as I'm the man playing him, <laughs> He is the man you see on screen somewhat. As an actor, you use always of yourself. Um, and if that cannot be the case, then you borrow. Um, and you try to identify with the man. And for me, there was a strong identification with this character because of my own life force. And in the hands of Susan Bear, you surrender to that person and opposite actors like Trina and Paprika, and particularly Trina in my case because she was the one that changes my character's life around. Mm -hmm. um, you, you you surrender to that and and play with as much sincerity as you can. And I think, it, it, you know, you talk about surrendering to the character, and I think that's a good parallel to dealing with grief as well because I think you have to come to a point in your life where you where you surrender where you become allow yourself to become vulnerable to life again and and find joy again it is well I found joy again in my wife Keely who's mm -hmm. just you know I when I was least expecting it or wanting it or needing it I thought somebody came into my life uh, with the name Keeley and changed my life around completely. And so uh, up until that point in time, you, I was, you know, enduring being alone and living a life. And uh, the suffering of life is, you know, no one escapes that. <laughs> yeah, None of us yeah. do. And it's, it's yeah. how you suffer. And uh, grace under pressure. And you just have to suffer sometimes. There's just no getting away from it. And you, 
you, you carry it for as long as you, you can, and then you just have to put it down and try to be done with it. Mm-hmm. Try to find the breath in between the pain. Where does work come into that for you? Do, do you find that, that performing can be a, a cathartic, almost therapeutic endeavor for you? Uh, acting has always been cathartic for me. Acting has been my life force and my strength. And without it, I'm luckily I paint, and that has become more significant. And uh, I started as an artist, so that's always been consistent. More strongly as I've gotten older, but acting and being an actor, being in the company of actors, is essential to my life. It has, uh, you know, I have nothing but gratitude for the gift of being able to perform and to make people happy. Um, it's it's so rewarding. It was never about the money. It was never about being rich or wealthy. It was always about being good at being an actor, being an artist, and the joy of making people feel alive, excited. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that's such a such a gift, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's nothing quite like it. Yeah, uh, I wanted to ask you about the the notion of chemistry because you have tremendous chemistry with your female co-star in, in this Trina. Um, it, when you're portraying intimacy on screen, do you set out to to kind of establish a professional intimacy before shooting with whoever you're working with? Oh well, Trina is such an easy person to be with and to to. Have to kind of fall in love with as a character, as a woman. She was very grounded in her own relationship and her husband and her child. So we, you know, when you work with great actors, there's such a strong sense of who they are and the job at hand. And the text that was there before us in the hands of Suzanne Baer, it was easy to trust that person. And uh, I I just liked her. I mean, she was easy to like and to be with. Uh, And she's such a, as I say, magnificent actress. I said to her, I said, you've got to pack your bags and go to Hollywood now. You just have to be seen by the rest of the world. Because she's so beautiful and has such a a dignity to her. Yeah. uh, She's really remarkable in the movie, too. I mean, this is a incredible and and it's a, the kind of performance you don't you're not allowed to see very often i mean this is a this is a beautiful middle-aged woman and it, and it tells a story from that perspective and that's so refreshing i thought so i thought it was greatly so that um it was two middle-aged people who've traversed life and uh when they least expect it collide with each other literally spiritually emotionally um and it's really her story. I mean, it's really, she's the one, the, the Venus that kind of uh, unleashes the love in his heart and allows him to to be to be vulnerable, to be open, to be not so hard-hearted, to have a sense of fun about himself. <laughs> and, yeah, um, yeah. Um, it, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I thought I read this, that this was, maybe I'm wrong about this, but this was shot... Kind of like the the dog, the dogma movement with handheld yeah, and dog, natural lighting. Yeah, okay. the, everything is handheld. There's just there's so th- that gives you allows you a great sense of freedom as an actor and relaxation mm. and and to to be very much uh, in the moment as opposed to the traditional master, you know. Over the shoulder, two shot, single, single. This style of filmmaking is, uh, you're just allowed to be, to play the scene. Mm -hmm. It it gives you a reality which is far stronger than the traditional. And uh, so you never know where the camera is going to be, even if you're on a, a shot of, say, 14 people. It's very much, it's very loose. So as opposed to playing to a camera, that, that, that really does promote the idea that you just need to exist. <laughs> well, somewhat. I mean, you know, listen, 
you, you can still exist in the traditional way as well. It's, when you do films and you keep making films, making films, the traditional is the master, the, the two shots, the close-up, the single, the single, and that becomes a repetition within a film. So within that, you know, being an actor, there's anxiety every day. There's a, there's a, there's a stress factor of performance. And so you can learn bad habits and you can lose a lot as it closes down slowly the camera upon you for the close-up. Whereas this, the the camera became a character, very much a character and a likable character because the man that was carrying it, his name was Morton, was brilliantly gifted. So there's much more of an intimacy with with the machine. I have time for one more question for you, and, and I reached out to your fans uh, because I wanted to give them the kind of the last word with you during this interview. Um, and first of all, so many, I was flooded with responses if they had a question for you. Yes. They think that you're the absolute best Bond. They love you. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, but uh, I'll ask one from, uh, this is from Laura. Uh, you've starred with some of the great, co-stars, actors and actresses in the industry, is there one that you would love to have an opportunity to work with that you haven't been able to yet? Oh, gosh, there's so many. There's Kate Blanchett, Jessica Chastain. Uh, gosh, uh, those are two that come to mind as act actors. Julia Roberts. Um, there, there are a num number of... Uh, Robert De Niro, <laughs> yeah. um, Daniel Day Lewis, Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> there are some some great actors there that just uh, have meaning in my life. Yeah, well, you you have great meaning in my life, and and so many others uh, as a oh. movie fan. And I thank you so much. Well, thank you. Best wishes to you, and onwards always.